Colorado will return to the Big 12, a conference that they spent a fair amount of time in between the Big 8 and the Big 12. They were there for 60 plus years before joining the Pac-12 back in 2010. And we will have all sorts of, of time to talk about what it means for Colorado to join the Big 12, what this could be as a potential domino moving forward. We'll chat with Gary Parrish about it, maybe even Teresa Walker. But I want to take this time to say what I'm pretty sure no one has said before, what everyone has been too scared, too close-minded to say, and that is it is time for Memphis to try to go to the Pac-12, CJ. Go West, Tigers go. I've already put together their tagline, their slogan. It's just go Tigers go with a little bit of West in the middle. Rivalries are dead. Time zones are nothing but a construct. And at this point, there are no rules. You're going to have USC and UCLA flying to Rutgers and Maryland for a brief blip moment in time. Back in the day, you had San Diego State exist in the Big East for like a couple weeks at least. Hawaii has been doing the rigorous travel schedule for the entirety of their existence. And I think that sometimes the only person who can really appreciate you is someone who is equally as desperate as you are. And that's what you have in Memphis and the Pac-12. Two desperate desperados wandering around the wild, wild west of college athletics. The future, a little murky, a little unclear. And perhaps they can help each other. And Memphis has been so desperate to get in the Big 12, as they should, because ultimately the eventual big event of college football is going to happen. And the worst thing that can happen for Memphis is that you have too low of a profile to make the cut. And is your profile in the American Athletic Conference, as it exists right here, right now, going to allow you to be in a position where you get to join in with all of the big guys when that break eventually happens? And I'm not sure if that is the case being in the AAC. So it is time for Memphis to abandon their Southern sweethearts, their central time zone cuties, and they've got to go out and they got to put on their California sunglasses and they got to put on their Pacific Northwest Patagonias and drink a little bit of that Utah milk soda. Don't ask, just go with it and do a little help us help you because the Pac-12 is equally as desperate. Like you lose Colorado at this point and it does feel like a Jenga board of, okay, this is it. Everything's going to topple. The Pac-12 is in dire straits. But the Pac-12 does at least have a situation where according to Big Ten media days that are going on right now, the Big Ten commissioner has said they are focused on USC and UCLA. And that doesn't bode particularly well for Washington and Oregon at this exact moment. The Pac-12 commissioner is out here saying things like, the longer we wait on a TV deal, the better options are we're gonna get. No, I don't know what that means. It doesn't really mean much of anything, but, but if the Pac-12 were to add Memphis, a top 50-ish market, you get Federal Express, you get the eighth wonder of the world in the Bass Pro Pyramid, you get a football team that as of now has gone to nine straight bowl games. Memphis, one of four teams in the entire country who have won 50 games at home since 2014. Those other teams are Alabama, Ohio State, and Clemson. You hold on to those small little records that you can hold on to when it shows that you have had sustained success at this level. And as an amendum, you also get, if you're the Pac-12, a storied basketball program led by a legend in Penny Hardaway. And if Washington and Oregon get sandwiched into staying in the Pac-12, and they're going to be really sad about it, and they're not going to be happy about it, but they might get stuck there, at least for a couple of years. And that's the biggest thing. This isn't a, a long-term, oh, forever ever in the Pac-12. No, you just want to set yourself up for the best abilities right now. And if Washington and Oregon are still there, those two are two premier football programs. Utah has alluded that they're not quick to move at this point in time. So you still get Utah as well. If Arizona doesn't leave, and again, that is a big if because the Big 12 is reportedly targeting the four corner states, whether it be Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, if those don't come, then they might shoot over to UConn, which is a whole other argument to be made. But if Arizona's still there, think about the basketball. And I know, basketball's always secondary. That'd be a hell of a basketball rivalry. And then if you get San Diego State, who can't join next year because after all the zig and zagging with the Mountain West, they'd have to pay like $30 million. But maybe the year after, they come in and join. And a San Diego State for Colorado washout not a whole lot of difference there in terms of athletic achievement, at least. And then what if in this hypothetical universe that, again, makes no sense because there are no rules and we're just flying here by the seat of our pants. What if Gonzaga, instead of taking a hypothetical invite from the Big 12, stays true to the West, stays true to Memphis? They don't care. But what if they join the Pac-12? There is a world where the Pac-12 at least gives you profile, at least gives you notoriety, and that's what you're playing for right now if you're Memphis. So embrace being the Hawaii of the Southeast. Take one of the worst travel schedules you could possibly have, but I would take watching Memphis, Washington State on Pac-12 After Dark versus watching Memphis versus Charlotte on afternoon AAC any day of the week, period. Cool. You're wrong on every single 
thing. And I didn't want to interrupt you because we're going to clip that mm -hmm. off and throw it up on, on the social. Um, if you're Pac-12, why would you want Memphis? That doesn't make sense. It, it, maybe you say it gets us into the central time zone. But going from the West Coast to central time zone, here are the schools you're, you're leaving. You're leaving Boise State. We're assuming San Diego State gets in, so that's two right there. Are, are you sure you can't go out and try and get somebody else in, in a Texas? SMU is, is around there. Uh, Take Memphis El, and SMU. Uh, Texas El Paso. So that moves you into to the central time zone. Nevada. Like, there, there are ways, even though Nevada is, is before Memphis on the, the traveling back east, I, I guess maybe you can say make the argument Memphis over Nevada. I, I don't I don't understand if you're the Pac-12 why you've already got this limited amount of money anyways. Is Memphis going to add so much revenue that it increases the money payout for everybody else involved? The answer is no. no. <laughs> that, so why would you add Memphis in? That doesn't make sense. And then Memphis is one thing for Memphis to have to travel fine, but if you're one of those other schools, you're San Diego State. Do you want to be traveling and having your volleyball team travel to Memphis, Tennessee for, for just this one thing? It's one thing for the Big 12 to do it with West Virginia. Those are closer. Texas Tech traveling to West Virginia is ridiculous, but those are closer. Memphis and Cal, right? Cal traveling to Memphis, that's much, much further for it? less money. Way less money. USC's going to go to Rutgers, though, because they're going to get close to $100 million just from football revenue. That's why they're going to do it. Pac-12 schools are going to get, what, $30 million? $35 million maybe? It just doesn't make sense. If you're, I get it, you want to raise your profile, go do it. But this, this is not going to be a good way to do so. You're desperate. You don't make good decisions when you're desperate. You make desperate decisions that allow you to hold on for just a small smidgen of time where maybe you're able to use that to catapult yourself into the conversation as opposed to falling into the depths of hell that is not being important irrelevancy hey, in the college football out. world they fell into that depth way back when when the ncaa allowed the big 12 to have a big 12 championship game with only 10 teams like that's when it happened that's when that split popped off once that happened the, the schools that were left out are left out, baby. Well, when you also make the argument about why would the Pac-12 want Memphis, they just need numbers. Like, I get it. They'll go out, they'll shoot for a Boise State, potentially a, a UNLV, whatever it may be. They need numbers. If Colorado leaves after next season, they only have nine member institutions. They play nine conference games. The math doesn't math. You've got to add someone quickly. No, you don't. Yes, you do. You do not. <laughs> you absolutely you do, not. do. How are they going to go fill one additional non-conference slate within a year time. I mean, they're going to completely continue to tumble off the cliff, which they are. I get it. I'm not here to stamp for the Pac-12. The Pac-12 is in trouble. They're in dire straits. I'm just saying Memphis is too. And perhaps you have a situation where two people can help one another in a very, very sad, desperate kind of way. Or, or what ends up happening when two desperate people get together, they make their situations all the more worse. It could be. And that's probably what ends up happening.